Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. I am James Workshop. But together we are Modeling for Advantage. <laughs> Darling Grant, mate. So this is the first of the new starter sets from uh, Flames of War. Flames of War is Battlefront. Okay. This is the one set in the Stalingrad, so this is winter 1942, mm. late autumn, and it's all infantry based. Yeah. While I unwrap this one, do you want to tell them what's in the box, James? I certainly can do. Okay, so obviously uh, Germans versus Russians. If you, oh yeah! If you don't know the Battle of Stalingrad by now, uh, maybe you can look at some uh, of Soviet, our previous videos. Mate. Soviet, oh, not uh, Russians. I apologize. I apologize. Soviet era Russian forces. Uh, okay, so we have uh, a German force, a Soviet force, the rule book again, Yeah, pretty great, uh, a quick start guide and 12 unit cards. The German force consists of two command teams, two infantry platoons, each with seven infantry teams, two anti-tank platoons who have the five centimeter guns, um, and a rocket launcher battery with Nebelwerfer rocket launchers, three sets. Nice. The Soviet forces consist of two command teams, two infantry platoons, each of which consists of Lots. a command team, a commissar team, nine infantry teams, and a pair of maxims. So that's a lot. Each one of those is 13, so 26 infantry bases. Boom! <laughs> Before we get to the 476mm gun teams and the three T-70s. I think Sweet. everything in here is plastic. Uh, I, I've just I've just out. opened it up yeah. you got, with these with these starter sets because oh, they're no, a different no, size than Star Army. Yeah. You get a nice kind of entree look. And look, James, you get oh. your you get your objective tokens around Very the car. Nice. Now, to be fair, at least they've provided some, right? That's great. If you don't have any, yeah. you cut these ones out. If you already play Flames of War, you want a serious battle, mm -hmm. you're going to buy these tokens, nice yep. acrylic ones that we've got little sets of. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to sort these piles out and we'll be right back. We'll go through the paper and the bump first to give you an idea of how much infantry there is in here. There is a mountain a of bases. You've got two, three, four, and five hole bases for your different uh, gun types and infantry types, and a mountain of artillery bases, because mm -hmm. there's a few cannon in here as well. Mm -hmm. um, you get dice. I love the fact that they provide you with a, a bag of your dice, and they're nice. nice. They're colored they're nice dice, dice too, And they're courses. colored. Yeah, That's very you get nice. some. They make dice for the factions as well, if you want them, mm -hmm. with, you know, hammer and sickle on and what have you. But these are nice, nice little dice. Um, especially to be included in the cheap starter yeah, set. Exactly. This retails at fifty pounds. That's good. And there has been a creep, right? Three years ago, hit the beach. The original starter set was thirty-four pounds. Then it went up to forty-two, yeah. and then it went up to uh, for, oh, forty-four maybe, mm. and now it's gone to fifty. Hopefully, it's not going to keep going up. But I think that these still re reflect really good value uh, for what you get. But we'll we'll go through the details of those. Mm -hmm. The paperwork you get. The quick start guide is like a 101 of Flames of War. It's not going to get you very far, but rather than yeah. feeling you have to read the full manual before you can play, yeah, they do provide a paperback manual in almost all of their books. This is the 2019 edition, so it's it's the up to date one. You get a pack of unit cards, which we'll talk about as we go through the sprues for our two faction, and then. Again, rather than shoving something in from somewhere else, mm. they've made they make unique um, assembly instructions around these kits because the proportions are going to be slightly yeah. different from just buying the infantry kit or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it tells you, and with these, they do a, they do a really good job. They even mark out which of the infantry are NCOs and oh, so that's very forth, good. Yeah. which is nice. Give you sample arrangements for the gun mm -hmm. layout. So. That's really nice, but that's not what you're here for, is it? Not in the yeah. slightest. What you're here for is to look at the sprue contents. So, do what we um, we'll look at the formations. Yeah, interestingly, does this contain new formations? Now, I don't think anything about mid-war, because this is a mid-war release. Um, I don't think there's any new formations in in this. Right. But they, they have provided a headquarters card for what we hope is a legal formation. So probably you're going to recognize these. So do you want to start yeah. Soviet or Nazi? Cool. It's well, a tough start. choice, personally. It's, it's a, yes, yes. <laughs> Let's start with the Germans, shall we? Let's start with the Germans. Okay, so the German, uh, what it's telling you to make is the Panzer Grenadier Headquarters Company. Do you recognize that from elsewhere? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. This is a standard German infantry formation. <laughs> Interestingly, Oh, that's German infantry formation. Panzer Grenadiers are all motorized infantry. 
Okay. They don't fight from trucks on the battlefield. No. Uh, no. But these are these are not just uh, army grenadiers, though. So these are perhaps a slightly better quality of unit um, with a slightly higher stats, mm -hmm. uh, maybe. So this is still mid-war, so you'll find your German formations, they tend to be really powerful in terms of stats. They're very gotcha. skilled. Yeah. They've got a lot, relatively a lot of firepower. So their motivation, they're confident for, but they have the last stand of three. Their skill is veteran at three. They hit on four, and they got the three up infantry save. They are armed with SMGs, though, this command team. Okay. Uh, so you're going to get a four-inch range with that. Yeah. But if you're fighting the Russians, they're coming that close. That's true, yeah. Four inches optimum on Russian range. That's, there's <laughs> a lot of weapons you got in four-inch range. Right. So your formation, then, that you're going to... Th that this box is coming with, and you can build on two. Um, a Panzer Grenadier Company, then, is two points for this headquarters, which is two of those SMG bases, three-man bases. It also, then, must contain two or three Panzer Grenadier platoons, which is the infantry platoon we'll talk about when we get to. Um, up to one MG34 team, sustained fire. Up to one mortar section. Up to one infantry gun section. Up to one... 15 centimeter infantry gun section up to two five centimeter guns that's the pack 38 i think and up to one sdkz 104 which is like the truck or the half track with the um, flak on the back oh, of okay, it cool yeah yeah but the, the sides are down on it the and necessary anti-air yeah so, yeah <laughs> the actual self-propelled anti-air like the verbal wind and stuff they're actually really late Oh, okay. They don't come into much layer. Germany cannot produce enough armored no. vehicles. I mean, Russia was needs. still just strapping four Maxims together and hoping for the best, putting them on the back of a truck. It went really well. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't well, stop really well. doing that. And then, and it, the Germans were out of planes, so it stopped being an issue. Yeah, true. At some point, it stopped being an issue. <laughs> uh, so that's your formation. Now, actually, to make this, you do get a special sprue, don't you, James? Which one's that? The, there's a German oh, headquarters. Oh, sprue. Sorry, yeah. There is yeah. a single command sprue. There it is. Now, now, these are these sprues. They are universal throughout the mm -hmm. the German period. So they obviously include some late war weapons. There's a Panzer Shrek there on there. There is a Panzer Shrek on here. You're not you're not going to use that in no. with this particular set. Um, but have you seen the the Colonel, the, the guy the, in the, the frock coat, gentleman in the great coat? Uh, he's an oh. awesome looking model. It's excellent for a fifteen for, for a fifteen millimeter model. I doubt you're going to get any good detail on that. We'll get a picture. We'll of get a photo of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a wonderful little model. There's a lot of character in just that one little guy. He looks like Nazi from many movies. <laughs> he does. That's the Nazi. Are you the voice <laughs> over? As he puts his gloves down on yeah. the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is that guy, right? Mm. 100%, yeah. No, he's yeah. custom designed to be that guy. Oh, also, it's a command screw, so there's someone pointing. There's a... That's how you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's that's your um, your command sprue. And then you're going to have, you're going to make in this box, you're going to then make two Panzer Grenadier Platoons. Mm. Um, so your Panzer Grenadier Platoon, um, similar stats, in fact, perhaps exactly the same stats, confident four with a three up last stand, yep. veteran three up, careful four up, and there's infantry save. They've got the standard infantry movement speed, eight inches, etc. Now, the way that Flames of War models their infantry bases, which mm -hmm. is four figures to a base, yep. but two bases is a section. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of spreads sometimes where the weapons are radically different between two halves of the squad. Mm -hmm. Gives you two separate stat lines. Yeah. But generally it's merged them into one. Mm -hmm. So actually the um they've called it an MG thirty fourteen. Yeah. Each of the four man infantry bases. So um you've got a standard sixteen inch infantry range, a rate of fire of three halted, two moving. Anti-tank power mm. two and firepower six. You're not defeating armored vehicles yeah. with it. The sprue here has plenty of 34s on it, and uh, yeah, um, Faust as well. Panzer Faust, sorry. Yeah. Yes, for, for for the for the same reason. Mm -hmm. And you're going to take these for seven or ten points at five or seven bases, and you can for one point, <laughs> no two points, two points. You can add a 2.8 centimeter anti-tank rifle. That's not an anti-tank rifle like the no. 13 and a half. What's the Soviet one called? Uh, PTRD. PTRD, yeah. PTRD. It's not that kind of anti-tank rifle. Right. It's a really small, long-barreled cannon. Um, and it's uh, it's one of these... <laughs> it's not on there. Oh, boom. Because yeah, you, you'd recognise it. And actually, this is one of the things you're going to get a problem with in this box. Yeah. Is this is a really rare weapon. Mm. It's a squeeze ball weapon. It was okay. primarily used by the Fallschirmjäger. Yeah. Because it's like the, the the heaviest cannon you can paradrop somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they developed for them, but the photos I've seen of it are all with them. 
but it is a really light portable infantry anti tank mm -hmm. weapon. But because it's squeeze bore, two point eight centimeter, it needs a tungsten penetrator to do anything whatsoever. <laughs> That's yeah. real low velocity rounds there. That's not great. And <laughs> and they're in a lot of tungsten in Germany. No, not so much. And you'd rather be making AP shells for your Tiger tanks and so forth, Definitely. rather than something. <laughs> If they, it, you know, if they had kind of Western availability mm. of rare materials, this was a good weapon system. I'm sure it was. It just relied, and it's not often in a war game you see those things. In Play the out. reality of yeah. German shortages, mm -hmm. something like tungsten, they just didn't get nearly enough of mm -hmm. it, and so this weapon goes out of service. It would be fine if they could get the materials and make the rounds yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. It's a nice sprue as well, though. Mm. Looking, at, looking at the spruce. We'll look Absolutely. at it in a bit. <laughs> so, uh, well, no, we're talking about the yeah. infantry okay. now. So, yeah, if I get one of the sprues out, so I've made a whole bunch of these. Yeah. And I, I, I've made these for winter. I've made these for late war. Um, so, they do for your. This is the only hard plastic sprue for Germans that they make. All right. And and with that yeah. in mind. Yeah. I'd take this over any of the other options that they might have provided. Yeah. Because <laughs> these are really nice sculpts. They're easy to paint. Uh -huh. Very little clean off. You just clip them off the sprue and file the helmets where you get, you know, a little bit yeah. a little bit of a knob on it. But they are mostly armed with MG42s rather than MG34s. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was in service till late 43, even. Mm. Um but you know, and and again, if you're making these for mid war, you don't want to be putting the Panzer Fausts on. No. Um, but save all those guys and, and use them on your on your on your late war guys. Um, Twenty four models on this sprue. Yes, and, uh, they're very unique sculpts. All of them. They're yes. really good. Yeah, you got you're right down to your potato masher guy. Yeah. Uh, you guys throwing a grenade. There's only one kneeling. I advancing. Think. Yeah. Yeah, you've not got a whole bunch of prone guys. No. You've even got the German MG42 firing in that assault mode mm. where one guy holds the bipod mm. over the shoulder and the other guy fires a machine gun past his ear. Yeah. <laughs> Safe. Safe. <laughs> it's like, I understand that this is how you fire this weapon on the move. Uh. I just think I'd rather find something to brace it against <laughs> other than Dave. <laughs> Dave, hold this! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but I mean, I've seen pictures. They, they definitely appear to have done it. It was oh, certainly in the manuals. Yeah, no, I'm sure that they did it in the propaganda. That sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In all the propaganda videos. Yeah, where he then gets a week off until he can hear videos. again. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, the MG42 is it, one of the things that's really famous about it is the noise it made. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's real loud. <laughs> it's been, been there in person while one's firing. It's very loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, well, there you go. You got one firing from the hip because he's dead manly. You can do a Johnny B and what I do a little bit with these as well, where you mm. have like bases that are themed and there's like this is your running group of people and this is. Your, oh, right. Yeah, you like to your match the poses. Yeah, I love doing that stuff. Semi pro. This, this semi base is semi pro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so because you've got the, as you say, you've got guys firing, one guy firing mm. the MG-34, uh, 42 from the hip, yeah. one guy who's carrying it, mm. yeah, and, and ammo carriers. I mean, you want to try and put the, M. Um, what I would incline towards doing is having one base with the MG-34 and an NCO with an SMG, mm. a loader and a rifleman, and then another base, a rifleman. Um, yeah. And the reason I would do that is 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 partly because I think it looks right, mm. but partly because if you wanted to then use your models in other systems, yes. you know, because these are just 15 mil infantry figures, or, right? Or even just within this system, so you can have like the, the flamethrower unit, you just pop the M42s out, and MG3442s out, and then just put the flamethrowers in, and you've got half your bases painted already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you're just going to be you're just going to be better equipped. And I think they do actually prescribe a method, they definitely do on their website, um, tell you exactly how they expect you to mm. base them. Um, yeah. And you're going to end up with a few figures left over here. Good. Because I think, how many did it say you were going to make? How many bases? So it wants you to make two seven-man infantry platoons and two command teams. So the command teams will come off the command sprue, and then it'll be uh, 14, so 28, 15, So it's 24, models. 27 figures, but you right. actually get four sprues. You've got, got one. And I've got three over here, yeah. Yeah, so four sprues. Yeah, you've got four sprues. So you've got, you've got a lot of choice. You definitely are not going to need to use those items that I mentioned before. Mm. You're going to be able to um, get yourself the variety. Yeah. And you're probably going to be able to make yourself a few. So again, like I said, with your leftover figures or whatever, you can make yourself some layer wall bases using mm. those 
Panzerfaust and Panzerschrecks yeah. and so forth. Five models on these are anti-tank models on each. So there's four Panzerfausts and then one of the magnetic mines. <laughs> magnetic mines. Yeah. yeah. But so that's it's it's a nice sprue. I'm glad they've included it. They make a range of different infantry in different materials. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest to build yep. paint a model, even if it's not quite perfect. It does match really well with the other plastic sprues. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Side by side to yes. some extent. So. Um, we, are we going to finish with the German stuff? Yeah, go for it. Yep, so that was that. The next thing that we've got a card for in here, as part of this formation then, oh, lost a bit of, is the five centimeter tank hunter platoon. So this is this one. Mm. This is tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. Compared to a normal size spray. <laughs> Just like an end So this is the Pac-38 uh, BM... 2016. 075 2016, so part of the original mid-war release. Mm. This is really symptomatic of modern um, battlefront plastics. There's nothing particularly extraneous on here. This is, what, six pieces? Yeah. You glue it together, it works, it does the job. Plus a ammo Plus box you've got a couple of ammo boxes yeah. to decorate the base with. Mm. Now these ones... They look at follow your assembly instructions. These ones, not only do they go on the same size base as the infantry base, okay, they go long ways, yeah, run sideways. And this is one of the ways they their basing conventions help you identify on the table gun calibers. So oh, the seventy cool. guns seventy five mil and over yeah. are on the big artillery bases, <laughs> whereas smaller guns are on mm, the infantry bases. base yeah. long ways. And really small, like that Panzerbusch we mentioned, or Maxim guns, mm. mortars, they go on horizontally. Mm. And I think, I'll just have a quick look, hopefully it doesn't take me too long. I think there will be five slot bases in here rather than four. Okay. And that's what they're for. Right. You know, one of these, but with five holes. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to do is give you a better arrangement to potentially put the crew figures around yeah, it. Yeah, okay, cool. Because So you want to put, you want to dry fit this stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to fit that gun and mm -hmm. three or four guys on here, dry fit it, Yeah. work out where they're going to go. But um, Base, fill, yep, yeah, there we go. Five hole bases. Mm -hmm. It's just giving you more crew positions so you can fit the gun on the base. Gotcha, okay. Yeah? How, in the German nice. force, how in any force, I guess, how common is it that you, you'll you reuse those bases? Because I know that with the larger artillery, like with my 75s a little bit later, I just put the crew on them and don't put the gun on. Yeah. <laughs> so I can swap out the 122. Yes. Is, is that still a relevant point for the smaller guns? I'm There's not sure that options. there's anything other than the pack. 38 that's going to go on that smaller base. Right. The pack 40, the 75 mil definitely goes on the bigger base. The Nebelwerfer goes on the bigger base, mm -hmm. so far as I can remember. Find out the Nebelwerfer got on the big base. Yes, it does. Yeah. We'll see in here. Um, it may be that one of the infantry guns, the 75 mil infantry okay. gun, uh, which I think is only available in resin and metal, but definitely, like you say, with the bigger artillery mm. bases. You could paint one set of crew <laughs> uh, for four guns yeah. and interchange the gun calibers. Um, and it's nice to still have the gun separate because when it's the base is destroyed, you can leave the gun as battlefield detritus yeah. and just take the crew away. Yeah. It's cool. Rather than putting a smoke ball on top of the men. <laughs> oh! so they're still just standing around. Yeah, yeah, a burning man there. Um, so the five centimeter gun. What's good about this is is that it's integral to the formation mm -hmm. in this in this mid war company. I'll just double check that I'm not making that up, and that helps with yes. It's a in fact, you can have up to two of them. No, it's it's a may, but you can have up to two of them. Right. But what that means is it helps with force morale. We've we've sometimes made armies that there just aren't enough core units, mm -hmm. and they end up being really brittle. Um, so being able to put these in. As, as integral yeah. to the formation, just bolstering the force morale. Mm. Now, for mid-war, we'll see this when we come to the Soviet tanks. This is this is probably better in the Western Desert than it is against the Soviets. <laughs> the five centimeter gun has got a range of twenty-eight, which is fine. A halted mm. two and one moving rate of fire. Anti-tank power is nine, and firepower is four up. Now, mid for mid-war, that's a decent gun. Yeah, that's fine. But Soviets have got better tanks than most people. Yeah, true. Not but, in this game, they don't. But yeah. <laughs> not in this box. <laughs> no. <laughs> not in this box. But you have to remember that that against um, T-34, it'll do it, but not well. Mm. And against KV, it, it either is going to struggle hard or, in fact, straight up impossible. Yeah. T-34 is a 12, I think. So you're not far off. I don't remember quite. Mm. We'll see. We'll, 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 we'll have a look. We'll look it up later. We yeah. can take these as two, three or four guns. I mean, there was just two in this box, wasn't there? 
There's three T70s in this box. There's no T34s. No, no, no. Uh, oh, sorry. I've pack got 38. I've got one. Yeah. yeah. So we've got one each. We've got one each. So there's two, there's two of these in the box. Mm -hmm. And the crew for these, um, if oh, you've not yeah. seen them before, this is BM135, which is Battlefront sort of default um, artillery crew. This has been available in a range of different materials over the period. Mm. Um, and this is like their generic artillery crew, right? Because you'll see that there's three different is it three different shell holders? Yeah, yeah. So you've got the guy on the end who is holding something that's probably a pack 43, yeah. you know, like an 88 a on a grand mat. Yeah. It's a big shell, yeah. Uh, then nearer the middle, you've got the guy holding the massive dildoid round, <laughs> yes, which I'm assuming we'll see. It's for the nibble, therefore, <laughs> yeah. And then the guy with the smaller shell, which is for a range of that'd be for your field howitzers, but also probably for this, yeah. Um. So they've given you, I think, five strips of this. They've given you enough strips mm. for all the guns. So again, you're going to have leftover crew. But it's worth knowing which munition type mm -hmm. you want to put on mm -hmm. the base. Um, and you are going to use the big dildo, go, uh, the big yeah. dildo round. Yeah. Well, two uh, of these are going to get used on here, aren't they? Because you've got the 38s and then you've got the yeah. dildo rounds. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Which they're yeah. officially now called. So the last German unit, um, I don't think this was integral. <sighs> really should have paid more attention <laughs> to this. No, it's not, it's not integral. To them, so this is the only support option in here. It's a naval verf battery, which you can take as either three or six guns for nine and 18 points. Um, it's got the same stats for other German artillery. No, also with a bigger base artillery, they usually have four up infantry saves. Oh, okay. Not three. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and, interesting. and we were playing it as three for a long time. Right. Because everything had a save, had a three up. Yeah. <laughs> and suddenly realized actually big base artillery tends not to. So the Nebelwerfer has got a range of 64 inches and a tank power of two and a fire power of four up. Um, but what's really good about this, the, the two things that are good about it, one is three is the magic number of guns. Mm. Because the, it's one or two guns is one bracket, three or four is the middle bracket, gotcha. five or six is the upper bracket. So you're not paying for a base that isn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, but they also use the Salvo fire template. Oh, those are fun. The rocket batteries. And the Salvo yeah. fire template is like 12 inches. It's huge. And on a table that's four foot deep, that is a lot of the table. Yeah, I think we. I tried to use it once. Because I had a unit that had salvo and we didn't have the template, and that was no. good fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, there's only templates about, about half the size. <laughs> it's a massive template, um, and you can still push it around. Tactical move two inches. <laughs> All right. Uh, terrain dash of two inches. <laughs> it's even got it's got a cross of five up. You can push this thing through a hedge Amazing. at a pinch. Um, as a sprue, then, what, what do you think, James? It's the Pack 36 sprue. It is. And it's got so many options. It's every Pack 36 available by the looks of it, including the barrel grenade. Uh, including and... the style grenade yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So, if you didn't want to build it as a um, dildo firing multi mortar, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. could build it as something else. That's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, this gun, it, it, it is a little bit more complicated than, than mm. the uh, Pack. The sprue the, is, the yeah. pack. The sprue yeah. is, but there aren't many more components. No. Um, there is there... No. The um, These two little bits, so you've got another dildo around and you've got you the do. charge that it comes in. Yeah. Um, the two different types of wheels, though, are a little bit more cagey. They might... It does show you which one to use on here. Okay, interesting. One of and them probably is and one of them solid steel. That seems to be really different. Yes. The, the naval buffer was built to be cheap. Right. Um, so I don't know which, which is which. So, naval buffers. Okay. Smoke launchers. Oh, is that is that something that's on the... Uh, no, that's what it means. Oh, okay, cool. You can fire smoke nice. with them. Okay. Um, but this... This thing as a, as, a, as a weapon system was not necessarily... I'm not saying it wasn't designed to fire rockets, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think I believe Naval Waffen means smoke launcher. Uh, okay. cool. Or smoke thrower. Smoke thrower. But I think that this is... Although it fires rockets, what it does is it's, it fires canisters of stuff. Right, okay. So that could be smoke. Yeah. It's a rocket propellant, but it's firing... Something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And okay. so... The reason why rockets are often so powerful is there's a lot, compared to an artillery shell, a steel or iron covered shell or whatever, mm -hmm. there's a lot of burst in charge in it. Mm. And that's why it's using a rocket to motor it. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it could be used for smoke. 
But it could also have been used for chemical weapons. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. Chemical weapons. But it was good to be prepared just in case the other guys used it. And mm. if they did, then these would have been able to fire chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. And there's some that have got like a napalm equivalent in as well. Lovely. I've seen some rocket batteries. <laughs> I don't know where they fire from these. They're actually, although War Gamers have got naval verfa, there's actually several different types. Oh, and okay. They get fired bigger sense. and bigger rockets, yeah. essentially. And bigger and bigger whatevers. But yeah, bigger <laughs> and bigger whatevers, yeah. No, no, I, don't they're ever, I don't believe they're ever used for chemical weapons. Right. But it was a means of delivering a, 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 a chemical payload. Uh -huh. Yeah. Chemical weapons, one of the few things the Germans did feel about bad about in World War One. I'm guessing. Well, Hitler got gassed, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> So Why not? You did lots of other evil right. things, so that wasn't done to me, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a subjective it concept of it humanity, well, right? Got his, uh, testicle shot off, and it wasn't against rifles. So, a bit picky there, really, wasn't he? <laughs> Yeah, that, the others in the Albert Hall, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the Germans. Mm -hmm. um, we have a look at the Sovietsky. Is this a hero rifle battalion? Is it a hero rifle? Is it a hero rifle? Battalion? Well, you know, like Bonnie Tyler, I'm holding out for a hero, <laughs> mate. And it is a hero rifle battalion. Yeah, know my forces from the mid war. Is every Just single one of them in the box? <laughs> is every single one of them a hero of the Soviet Union, though? Must be. Or, is, or all the rifles heroes. It's difficult to know. Mm, yeah. I mean, you think about it. You know, yeah, Congressional Medal of Honor, the Victoria Cross. Mm. Hero of the <laughs> Soviet Union, mate. Yeah, you get a that. poster and a badge and you're a legit hero. No one's going to hear that title and be, oh, what does that mean? Mm, absolutely. <laughs> Granddad, we'll have the Victoria Cross. Oh, okay, what's that? <laughs> hero of the Soviet <laughs> Union. Mate, look, it says it right there. <laughs> legit hero. Fantastic. Yeah, they all are to me. They yeah. Okay. They're all heroes. Yeah. So Hero R Rifle Battalion. I don't know. What, was that? That's what Flames of War calls it. Yeah. Is that a legit formation? No idea. Not in the slightest. I know they had guards formation yeah. and they had shock formation. They did. Yeah. Presumably not. I mean, Hero of the Soviet Union was an award that was given out mm. quite generously. Yeah. But not like on a battalion <laughs> scale. <laughs> um, it's the generic term that they seem to use for the Soviets where it's you get like a smaller amount. That seems to be the only thing it's the hero about, does. A bit better. So there's like, no, not even a bit better, I don't think. They're just like, this hero tank battalion just means that you could take uh, less tanks. <laughs> you, <laughs> take, you, took you a can tank have a formation battalion. with less yeah. tanks in it. Yeah, it, it's just, right. it fills the infantry slot because the Soviets tend to have a lot more infantry than everybody else. So they need they to do. have that smaller amount somehow. And they just made them all heroes. All heroes. <laughs> yeah. That bigger numbers thing, really interesting. Mm. You know, you read in all the... And a lot of historians say it as well. It's like the German officers always talking about these, uh, uh, you know, unending hordes of mm -hmm. barbarians from the east. Yeah. This uh, Soviet unlimited manpower type stuff. Mm. The German forces actually outnumbered the Germans when they invaded, uh, outnumbered the Soviets when they invaded. Well, according to German numbers, yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what, on, what, what endless Soviet hordes? There's more of yeah. you than there are of them. If, if I was writing my memoirs after the war having lost... I yeah. think I'd probably say, oh, there were a lot of them. There was just too many there of them. Were, there were way too yeah. many of those. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the American Civil War. The Southerners, oh, we lost resources, yeah. manpower. I mean, there was a genuine resource and manpower discrepancy yeah, there. there was. Um, but in terms of deployed manpower, actually the Soviets, I think it's about 43 before they got more in the field than the... Than the uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> that sounds about right for the war, yeah. Um, and, and the other thing is, they have a manpower shortage. Mm. There are women in the Soviet army, not because they have unlimited manpower. <laughs> talking about, you know, we, all, we were all scraping a barrel for manpower, mm. but the Soviets went pretty far with it. Yeah, I think the, the Soviets were a little more open to female infantry in the first place than yeah, the yeah, country. Yeah. They were just, yeah. The, fe female fighter squadrons, yeah. female specialists, yeah. snipers as well. You know, it's not just... Uh, Tele telegraphists and, mm. and clerical officers. Yeah. What, actual women rifle battalions. What information we have does kind of push towards the fact that they had worse equipment and they were treated a little oh, bit as well. Have you seen the planes that, that they gave them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Gems call them sewing machines because they're the noisy engines, mate. Because they just went chick, 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 yeah, flying yeah. through the sky. But they hated them for that because you was them. Mm, until they turned the engines off. But that's a yeah, different story. So glad that's a great story. <laughs> it is an excellent the story. The Nacht Hexen, the Night Witches, <laughs> they don't come in this box. Oh. But if 
They release a box where you get them in it. I'm, I'm on it. 100%. I'm, I'm on it. I'm painted. So I don't paint yeah. anything. I will paint yeah. them immediately. All right. <laughs> so the formation it's recommending you build here, yeah. not too surprisingly, is the Hero Rifle Battalion. As James suggests, I think it's giving you the Hero Rifle Battalion rather than the regular one mm -hmm. because this would be all Soviet infantry. It would be. If you like can make a full... bases minimum, I think, with the big one. It's <laughs> yeah. huge. Although there's quite a lot <laughs> there in There are, there. yeah. So the Hero Rifle... The other thing about the Hero Rifle Battalions... Um, their formations is their stats are, there are some stat differences okay James. I'm not sure uh, yeah there are they're not, and I, I couldn't tell you exactly what yeah, they are but the stats they're a bit closer in capability to the okay. to the mainline German stuff so you've got a motivation of 4 up skill level is green which is a 5 but they do assault on a 5 because for the motherland <laughs> as you get in that great video game mm -hmm. um, they are aggressive hit on a 3 so you do get through these guys you do yeah. but you get a lot of them so yeah. it's all it's all good it's just a different way to play right um, and they save on a 3 up That's good. it's still a 3 up save they could still go down like they're still real difficult to remove from anywhere <laughs> yeah absolutely um, and you get so you get two bases right a two base rifle HQ for a single point, mm -hmm. and I was just going to compare that because I think the German HQ cost you two points for your two bases, and that's kind of the trend that we're going to see throughout here. Twice as good though. Is that the, Ger is that the Soviets get more, mm -hmm. and the Germans is slightly better. You're really going to see it in the infantry fire mm. I'll Hold my breath before I read out the the list of everything you could possibly include in this formation. Good one. <laughs> you will include one Hero Rifle Battalion HQ. This card. Two bases wear rifle for a point. One to two hero rifle companies. One hero rifle company or storm group. Back to that in a minute. One hero SMG company. Up to one hero. Up to one Maxim company. Up to one PTRD company. Up to one 45mm anti-tank company. Up to one 45 or 76mm anti-tank gun. Up to one mortar. Up to one big 120mm <laughs> mortar. Up to one scout platoon and up to one sniper platoon. Yeah. This is always a good one to include when you're building a force because you can keep that, that formation on the card. Yeah. Just keep adding stuff that you want to take yes. in the army. Over Absolutely. And, over and you can make this formation pretty damn big. You can. Yeah. Uh, as discussed, we, we, we're barely scratching the surface mm. of the of the options that were available to you mm. there. Um, so that's the Hero Rifle Company. Now, there isn't a Soviet HQ... Separate sprue. Separate no, sprue. one here. The little one that, that you saw for the Germans. So it's just the mainline sprue. Yep. Uh, have you got that there? Yeah, I've got one here. You've got a collection. I've got a bag here there. so I can see how many sprues you get. I've yep. got four. I've got one. And you've got one. So that, that means five. Yep. And these are 24 figure sprues, I think. 24, okay. including the Maxim gun. Yeah. Oh, including the headless Maxim gunner. Uh, the, the other parts on it. Oh, the, it's in yeah. two halves. It's in two halves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cute. It is. I don't like to headless Maxim gunner. <laughs> We've got a pair of clippers, do we like? <laughs> Knock yourself out. Not sure you can call that a conversion, but go for it. <laughs> Alright, so um, this is your image of which you get five, so you've got about, what, 120 ombres mm -hmm. there. But you are going to make some, uh, as well as your uh, rifle bases, you're going to make a few other bits out mm -hmm. here. So if we look at the Hero Rifle Company, yeah. of which you will have two, and then you can show how the different figures on there. Right, because you hear a rifle company, because it can have all these different, mm. as well as the HQ mm -hmm. being able to have many subcomponents, the company itself can add in extra weapons as well. <laughs> so, you either have a 10 or a 7 base uh, hero rifle company, and it comes with a commissar, and that's 5 or 7 points. Yep. So, you know, 11 bases of dudes for 7 points. You can have a lot of these guys. <laughs> 11 bases. Even in the hero. Yeah, Even, and this is the hero. Lot, yeah. These are the decent ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, so your basic thing is just your your uh, DP and rifle team. Mm -hmm. So that is your basic stat line. It's got a halted and moving rate of fire of 1, yep. anti-tank power of 2, and, and fire power of 6, 16-inch range. Not bad. Um, and what that's going to be in terms, of, in terms of basing is you want a rifle team on one base, and the and DP team mm -hmm. on the other base. I think it's probably the way that you want to do that. Um, but on top of that, the unit has the option to add up to two PTRD platoons, up to two Maxim teams, up to one 50mm mortar, and up to one flamethrower, mm -hmm. with the flamethrower being two points. So all these extra weapons have got different stat lines. Now in here, 
on this sprue the maxim and that's it it's just the maxim so you're going to have five maxim guns across mm -hmm. here so you're going to be able to put two in each which for the sake of playing the game is the best version of that unit because the maxim isn't that much more complicated than just firing some rifles whereas everything else in that unit gets real complicated <laughs> real fast yes because <laughs> the maxim as a, as a single base has got yeah. a rate of fire of six Mm -hmm. or, uh, halted or two moving and it's got a 24 inch range yep. so you know not it's got range and firepower mm -hmm. in fact two bases of maxims got more firepower than the re every other base it certainly does <laughs> it's worth remembering when you're playing flames of war and we don't do this nearly as much as we probably should mm -hmm. in our games is you can leave elements behind mm -hmm. yeah yeah now once they're out of command and control range they can no longer they're no longer independently able to move other than to catch up mm -hmm. their on their future movement has to be in a straight line towards the headquarters right. but if you want to leave your maxim teams on the hill firing mm -hmm. while your rifle teams move up you absolutely can and, and maybe should do that they can still fire at full force they still fire at full force yeah if they move they have if to they move they have to return to their wow. yeah didn't yeah. that didn't have a clue that was a thing. <laughs> That's <laughs> happening in future. We'll do that in a game. I guess things roll we'll around my head right But now. you know, like when you get those, you often get with our ones, you get like um, uh, a mortar mm. is in the unit. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a short range mortar as well. Yeah. It's like, mm, yeah, you want to bring it out with you and then at the point when leave you're going to close range, <laughs> yeah. you leave it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's the Hero Rifle Company, of which there are two. Yeah. Uh, those are the bits you're going to find relatively hard to get hold of um, because they tend to come in the rifle boxes i uh, seem to remember the ptrds do they come in the um what what's that odd unit that you said we'll come back to that later storm group. To come back to that they all come in the storm group <laughs> if you add the storm group so what's the storm group it's not here no uh, the storm group differs from this smgs it's an smg yeah. armed infantry force it's a city fighting force is what it was kind of released yeah. for and as far as the the boxes yeah. were concerned yeah mid-war city fighting it's a good little box i've got one um i use it a lot so it's good yeah yeah, um, uh, this, and that, uh, but in that you're going to get your flamethrowers and your, and your uh, small You don't boss. get flamethrowers in there, I don't think. Oh, was that with the engineers? That, that was the engineers, yeah. yeah. You do get your PTRDs, you do get your smaller mortars, you do get smaller. There yeah. might have been flamethrowers in there, I don't remember anymore. There are other weapons. Some of them made out of different materials as well. You've, Storm you know, you get the best of it here with the hard plastic. Yeah. Um, or whatever, whatever this is. The Storm Group's all That's all this. That's <laughs> Is it? Yeah. It's all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was fine. It was one of the first things I put together for the Soviets, and I felt yeah. okay about it. So, absolutely. And and this infantry is never, you know, even as you expand, you're still mm. going to need these guys. Yeah. Oh, this is in everything. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it does everything. Al although you get 13 bases. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things about about a D6 system mm. is if uh, a, a standard infantry unit is is normally a no a, a decent unit is hit on a four. Yeah. Okay. If it's infantry and it didn't move, it's concealed and gone to ground. Mm -hmm just by not doing anything yeah yeah that goes up to a six mm -hmm. if you're at long range that goes up to a seven mm. that makes them quite inherently difficult to hit yeah let alone kill these guys being hit one better mm -hmm. a hit on a five that's double the number of hits difference, yeah. and at long range the difference between six and seven is is, is three, times. Mm -hmm. three times so you know and they have only got one firepower dice yeah. each mm. base so you will get through these what you really need to do with them is hurrah! Because their salt is Big the only time. thing that they're at all good at. Yeah, it's the only and thing they're a large number of bases. <laughs> superior by volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna win. They're gonna win assaults because they're probably as good as everybody mm -hmm. else at assaulting. But there's plenty of them for the points. Um, so that's that's your infantry. I mean, it, it's a lot to paint for sure. Yep. Um, was there anything special on here? We the commissar team. Mm -hmm. So, is there a commissar on this brew? Mm, the guy with the uh, megaphone. I'm, lo I'm looking for him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the ca there's a captain to the left of him, and then there's two guys who have. There's one guy with an SMG and one with a pistol, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah, to the right of them is some uh, NCOs. Yeah, yeah, I see them. I see them. Yeah. So. Yeah, the one with the megaphone. So, yeah. Of the 24 the models on here, six of them are command oh. models, or five of them are command models. I don't know if the Soviets... I don't know whether they're actually... They're called political officers, aren't they? Yeah. Commissar's not the Russian uh, term, is the, it? The commissariat is a thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I think that they were uh, propaganda officers. I don't think they were military yes. officers. Because propaganda is not a bad word back then. No. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> propaganda's the news. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the state news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, propaganda, because of state news in World War Two. <laughs> mm-hmm. propaganda, that's a bad thing. Yeah. But I, mean, I think Goebbels' title was propaganda. Minister of Propaganda. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a bad word. Yeah, no, we had one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rosie the River posters out there somewhere <laughs> that proved that someone designed it and let it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so you painted a fair few of these, of these guys, James. Yeah, probably they got together to all right. do this box. Yeah. <laughs> um, they were lovely. Really nice yeah. models. And again, lots of different poses. You can make yeah. funny little bases. And yeah, things. I mean, it looks to me like there's 24 unique guys on here. Yeah, there's 24 unique guys, yeah. Or, yeah. Or thereabouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the Maxims, uh, I have the resin ones as well, because I had the, the other Storm Group. Right. These are nicer in almost every way. Oh, right, okay. So you <laughs> yeah. heard it here first, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. All right, so you get those two. You're going to make your, your you need you do need to make a commissar base. You do, which is for each of the two battalions, which is the commissar and just a random buddy, right? Yep. And you put them on the on the two piece yep. bases. The commissar and an entity. Um, and the commissar, as long as the commissar's alive, then you get to use this blue number here. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. That's what that's what he does, um, which is important because your motivation, which a lot of your sort of maneuver type tests and maybe even your test to go into assault or something. I think, yeah. The, the, you, you make this test regu- semi-regularly mm. and it is one better. So if you're in an army where your infantry actually goes and does things, which most of them, that isn't what they do. <laughs> oh yeah! Most people <laughs> just dig it in an objective and leave it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the, the other two things mm. we've got in here um, are the 76 mil artillery battery. So that's this grey sprue. Yep. And the men as well. And the men. Yeah, so this is BM075 2015. Mm. So this is slightly before a lot of the mid war stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can see it's, it feels like it's made by a different company. <laughs> uh, I mean, the injection molds are made by yeah. a, 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 a different company, okay. right? They make Never them on their behalf. Me. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's just the tubing's a bit thinner and so forth. Right. Um, okay. But again, this sprue actually makes more than one weapon, right? It does two different ones, yeah. I don't remember what the other one is. I just remember I never wanted to build one because it was the same points and worse. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't it, work out what it was. Is it that is it that it makes the for, is it the forty five mil anti tank gun? Yeah, or forty seven or whatever caliber. Worse it is. job of being an anti tank gun than the seventy six does. Which then the seventy six acts as artillery. Yeah. So, so this seventy six mil is lent up against the box in front of you. Lent up against the box in front of me. Is this, is this the Zis 3? This is Zis 3, yeah. This is the Zis 3. This one's the... nice to put together. Yeah? <laughs> the one for bolt action. <laughs> the away. bolt action was all metal. I'm no. Still, still hurt it's about 28 that. mil. Yeah, it's still, still, still hurting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this one being all plastic, nice mm-hmm. simple parts like most of the artillery. Yep. You've got a few extra little bits you there. Or is that a table. I you love get that a little, little table. table. Is that what that is? It is, yeah. I've got it on a couple of my bases with like a. Oh, that is sweet. It's a great little table. <laughs> I've got that one is, of them that is the best thing in this box. Yeah. I think this one of table. my artillery bases has the table like lent over like a piece of uh, plating in front of the oh, gun. As well. like, like, uh, push yeah. the table over and push the like, gun in. Movie yeah, armor. Exactly. <laughs> Does absolutely it's nothing. Like, yeah. If a bullet won't go through your dining table, then yeah. it's a really, really <laughs> low powder gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Um, so yeah, it does build two guns. One is this, the Zis 3, one of which may be the 45 mm artillery gun. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, is it on the card? Or is is it, it on the card? Yeah. No, this is the card for the 76 mil because the other stats would be quite different. Yeah, they are quite different. I wasn't sure if it was a joint card or something. Um, so again, uh, this is this has got the aggressive problem. Um, it's got the halted a moving rate of fire of two and one. It'd be, it'd be a problem if they weren't a third of the points of the other guy. <laughs> um, the anti-tank power is nine, Fine. which was, I think, was what the, the German mm. five centimetre was. Mm-hmm. Um, and a firepower of three up, though. So the the firepower, the way Flames of War models their guns, mm-hmm. the anti-tank number, anti-tank rating, is yeah. its chance of penetrating. The firepower number is the size of the bursting mm-hmm. charge, mm-hmm. Um, which is why lower velocity... Heavy guns can still be really effective. Mm-hmm. Like, they may have slightly lower chances of penetrating, yeah. but when they, if they do, they are likely to be destructive. Yeah. It's the exact um, same profile as the gun on a T thirty four. Because it's the exact same gun. Exact same gun. Same Yeah, seventy six point two. So you can take these as two or four guns for four or eight points. So these are nice and cheap. And we get four in here. 
Um, so if you don't have these, you absolutely at some point in your life will want the You'll full want size battery. Yeah. If you get two kits, whenever there's an option to make two multiple versions of kits, generally in their sets, perhaps to avoid confusion, they only give you cards for the ones that fit within the era mm -hmm. for the theme that they're trying to present. Um, so there isn't any information about this other gun on here. That information is on their website if you put the product code in. So if you get a second set of these, you definitely don't want two batteries of these flames of war. The system doesn't... No, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, doesn't promote that, does it? Well, you, you have the spotting problem mm. in the Soviet Army. You really, <laughs> spotting you really do. <laughs> it's, it's not a strong suit because that runs off their skill level. No. Uh, which, when we worked out that you start the game spotted in, you start ranged in. Game changer. <laughs> yeah. Because rolling for it sucks. <laughs> Having it for free, amazing. <laughs> yeah, because these guys, skill level is green, yeah, five up. Trash. So um, you might think as a player that firing artillery is about observing mm. indirect fire. Not if you play mid-war Soviets. <laughs> you play mm. mid-war Soviets about pre-planned barrages on fixed ranging in points you've chosen at the beginning of the mm. game, which if they're objectives, that's likely to be useful yep. still. And you paid your artillery with cheap. Mm -hmm. Or it's about direct fire over open yeah, sights. That's the main thing about these guns. They can't <laughs> yeah. aim in for anything. <laughs> However, they'll yeah. take out most of the mid-war tanks at a push. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, rather than, as, as, as a different way to play, an interesting way to play with the Soviets. Dig your guns in on your objectives, mm -hmm. push your infantry onto his. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Whereas that still is a bit counterintuitive. People tend to put their guns, hide their guns, mm -hmm. um, and use their infantry to protect their objectives. Just have a screen of bases yeah. <laughs> yeah. in front of you, maybe dig guns in on the, objectives. The mid-war for the Soviets is really difficult to get spotters as well. There's like mm. one option at all. To, is it, is it a BA-64? You yeah. have to take it as one of the additional units. It's, it's mm. not part of any of the formations. You're going to get one. You're going to get one. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's one. And when you car. when you do the range in, it's the worst of the two things. And again, because you've got the D6 system, yeah. five up, that feels doable. And you get three attempts. Yeah. yeah, so you might range in on the third attempt. There's an even chance you yeah. will. That's assuming there's no modifiers to that nice. And you you use the worst skill rating of either the observer or the battery. Mm -hmm. Not the best. Mm -hmm. It's like who's who's holding this up? So it's never going to be better than a five up. No, no. And we, I mean, we played it, haven't yeah. we? Well, that's you what I mean. The indi failed to range indirect in fire is really like, yeah. Unless you have a spotter, that's not a thing. And yeah, yeah it's it's just a nightmare. You just start the game ranged in on something you hope you hit for the rest of yeah, the yeah. game. Like, yeah, but you aim in on something you don't think they want to move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then when they do move it, good. Yeah. Or or or, or, or look at them is mm. <laughs> the other way. Yeah. Right, last thing, a little bit of an interesting um, uh, uh, addition in mm. here. Oh, we'll get the stats on that other gun because the T-70 has got that 45 mil gun. Oh, there you go. So the T-70, um, curious little vehicle. It is. It's got the, it's got the similar stats. So it's confident. It's got not one step back, last stand. Now, that is a, that is a Stalingrad thing, isn't it? Well, yeah, it was in the Stalingrad. Isn't it? Uh, there's something like there is no land for us beyond the Volga. I okay. think it's, some, it's something like that. The, yeah. I mean, it's not quite mm -hmm. uh, last stand, but there is the order that goes out to the Soviets that they're not one yeah. step back yeah. is part of the 1942 thing. Because mm -hmm. you think about the, the the territory the Germans have occupied in 1941 yeah. of the Soviet Union. It's like, we can't have another year like that. We've been left. <laughs> one step back is the rest of the country at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bits that we live in anyway. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, you know, and you probably heard all this stuff about penal battalions and NKVD shooting their own guys like in all their movies. Yeah. And they actually, the problem wasn't nearly so much the soldiers, it was the officers. Mm. It was um, officers who were over upon because of the purges you got a lot of people gone up several ranks mm -hmm. very quickly mm -hmm. and just don't have the experience of command um and they fight some really tough situations yeah. and things when you're on the offensive and things are going well weaknesses are not obvious mm -hmm. and they have an offensive doctrine that the whole light yes. tank doctrine the soviets <laughs> like yeah. they've probably done exercises where things seemed okay so, mm -hmm. yeah but as soon as you put that system under stress when knowledge experience yeah. all of those kind of yeah. things like i have been in the shit before mm -hmm. these guys didn't have that mm -hmm. and it wasn't i'm not saying that the individual soldiers weren't falling back and mm -hmm. retreating but what they were trying to stop 
was formation commanders pulling out. There's a pretty key reason why the second in command was a propaganda officer. He was, yeah. he was keeping the general going as much as he was keeping everybody else going. <laughs> yeah. and, and just making it clear to that, you know, that, that whole... Because what they had decided at Stavkar and Stalin was mm. that if these people had held out in pockets, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. Yeah, yeah. And that's you know. a morale issue more than anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, that doesn't work indefinitely, as the mm. Germans would try and do that for the remainder of the war, <laughs> from 44 to 45. So that works a bit. Yeah. But the point is that the, the high command wanted the, 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 to make the decision about whether to stand or fall mm -hmm. back. Because um, I think well, the order is issued, and um, when this, this order is issued, the guy with the massive... Curly must is Budioni, I think. <laughs> is a, look at that guy's photograph. <laughs> Check he's, he's magnificent. He's in the Caucasus, and he's holding an indefensible line. Okay. And he actually gets permission to retreat, mm. right, like right as that yeah. not one step back issue is mm -hmm. up, order is issued. It's like, yeah, but he's <laughs> not one step back. But you, can you take a step back? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, because he's got the German army between him and the rest of Russia. Mm. This is the um, Doing army group well. A that's heading into the Caucasus. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, I need to fall back to that river and the mountains, mate. Mm. I'm not getting any help from anybody else for the rest of the year. I know that, mm. and this is the main axis of advance. My point with all this is to yeah. say that it isn't what that depiction you see of. And, you know, the Russians sent into a suicidal attack. Yeah. Then falling back to get shot up by the NKVD. Mm -hmm. That's not really what those blocking detachments were. No. About. Most of those blocking detachments, they round up the serious malefactors, they mm -hmm. sent to penal battalions. But most of them is just like, why don't you just turn around? <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're going, mm, what are my options here? Get shot by this guy yeah. or go back to my unit. It was super rare too. Like that, it's that doesn't mean that thousands of yeah, soldiers it, weren't it, executed. It didn't, from what I've looked up, it didn't really happen very often at all. No, because the objective is to of, keep them in the fighting yeah, line. Yeah, you want to keep people in the fighting line with good morale, not yeah. uh, with very bad morale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, if yeah. You can't run backwards. They're still sideways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't want people giving a go. Or just desperate to get <laughs> yeah, out. Or, yeah, or defecting or any of the other. In fact, in this period, you still have large numbers of people sat volunteering. Mm. Not all of the military districts have been mobilised. There isn't the equipment or the infrastructure to get them in there. Not yet. And people are signing up to join the army in the belief they're going to get fed. Yeah. Now that turns out not to be true. Not so much. <laughs> but that was a but good. They, they bought their own rifle, and that's what's important. <laughs> <laughs> like you've been people volunteering because the food, because the food shortages mm. because of course like we're experiencing today Ukraine was the breadbasket of Europe then as yeah, much as it is well, now yeah. Ukraine overrun in a year no chance to prepare for that there's food shortages mm. and people think I join the army I get fed yeah mm. and one of the more fertile areas of the country you just abandon and poison the wells on your way out yeah so. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah even when we go back mm -hmm. so the T seventy is a tank is a well is it a tank <laughs> no, James it's, it's a heavy armored car let's be honest it's the only tank in the box <laughs> um, so it, it's got it's got a remount rating of uh, last stand rating of three up there mm. uh, it's skill rating is trained it's got the aggressive hit on a three problem mm -hmm. it's got the i haven't got any armor or four the front two at the side and one mm -hmm. top um armor 10 inch tactical moves so it's not really fast it's not slow um with a road dash of 20 if you really need yeah. to move it you can um and it's got a 45 mil gun which has got an anti-tank power of seven mm -hmm. five power and overworked because it's two man turret i mean it's it's the vehicle designed by the Russian forces so that you could build it and maintain it in a garage. In a garage? Rather than in a factory. Not in a tractor factory or a, a train yard. Factory. No, you could just take it down to the local mechanic <laughs> and he and would he probably recognise enough of this to get going. <laughs> right. So nice. That's, that's all it is. It's basically just a car with But you get three of them for six points. You get three of them for six points, yeah. And it's, it's got a machine gun on it. Um, it's the SU-76 as well. Same chassis. Yes. Yeah, they just turn the whole bad boy around and stick a chain hey, gun on it. Hey, <laughs> always looking to improvise. Yep. So yeah, yeah. it's... it's Useful throughout the entirety of the war, they never stopped using it. Like, why would you? It's a good scout vehicle. Uh, yeah, one of the again, uh, which again, war games overlooked. So you look at a vehicle like this in the war game, saying mm -hmm. this is just something for an anti tank gun to yeah. shoot at that hasn't got anything better to shoot at. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that, that's true. But we tend to play in spaces where the ranges are really quite close. Mm. Mobility isn't the issue that it is. Yeah, it on the Russian steppe mm -hmm. or the plains of the Ukraine. Yeah, or whatever. The reality of it is. If you've got a tank and they haven't, you're yeah. winning, mate. Yeah. yeah. Well, the <laughs> and the Russians had a doctrine about having a lot of tanks. Mm -hmm. 
the thing with these ones as well is that the, 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 ger going. the German opposition to this is is an armoured car. Yes. So if you're going to come up scout versus scout, you've, yeah. got, you've got a tank that has the reliability of a 1940s car, which is better than a tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it's going to beat the other guy do in the a business, similar yeah. position. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're very you're, not, you're not going to assault anywhere with this, but... But all you know, all kinds you don't of need to. <laughs> forward reconnaissance, yeah. flank jobs, behind the line mm. stuff, second second yeah. wave, exploitation. There's a lot of potential roles for a vehicle mm. like that. Yeah. And it's where the commanders hang out in artillery battalions and like yeah, you keep yeah. moving. T seventy. Yeah. Uh, they're part of a whole generation of light tanks of which this is just the one that's in this kit. Is it the latest? Is it newer um, than T60? It must be newer than T60. It's way newer than a T60. Is it yeah. newer than T26? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. it was the last one. It's probably the last so, yeah. light tank. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine so. Yeah. yeah. We didn't talk about the artillery crew sprue for the Russians, is. which is an oddity, because I believe it is the only artillery crew sprue that they make. In plastic, do you mean? In hard plastic. In hard plastic, yeah. In hard plastic, yeah. They have a few of these small hard plastic sprues mm -hmm. that they make, like that German command sprue that we saw. Yeah. Um, there's a the US command sprue. Mm -hmm. and there's, But yeah, there's a Russian artillery it's one. everything you want. There's two guys pointing. Two guys pointing. Two guys one, pointing. one up, one down. I'm doing that. I never like that guy. Do you not? Well, I think if you've got to cover your ears, then we all need to do it at the same time. Yeah. Not just one person and everybody yeah. else just has to well, listen. The other guy's busy pointing. <laughs> He's busy. He's only got yeah. one hand he even could do that with, and that's a bit embarrassing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But yeah, uh, six artillery crew yep. figures. This is going to do you for a range of different guns. Yep. Are, there, are there two different shell types there? there? Are. Yep. Yeah, but they're, they're so similar, I wouldn't fuss about. No, it's just about the length which of the is right, casing, right. isn't it? That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's probably the propellant charge. That's yeah, the velocity. Exactly. Generally speaking with those shells, the longer ones are the anti-tank ones. Not, sense. Even though they're often smaller bore, they're longer mm -hmm. because it's velocity. Yeah. That's the amount of powder. For the push. For the push, yeah. Final thoughts, Final James. Thoughts. Summary. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, everything that's in this box for the Soviets, uh, you're going to keep using it. <laughs> you so, are. Because yeah. the same stuff is all good um, for late war too. If, if you are one of the people that is a re relatively casual player, and you brought the previous boxes, they're all really tank heavy. <laughs> yes. So this is very infantry heavy. This will round out Absolutely. the force. If, if you've just gone like, okay, I want to play the Stalingrad box, and then I want to play the other box, this, yeah. will, this will fit round out the forces nicely. Yeah. The Germans too. And, and even if you've got an existing collection, you paint yeah. these guys up for winter if you've already got some summer ones, mm -hmm. vice versa. Um, yeah, it's good to, it's good to see. I, I, as an existing player, it's less attractive just because this box contains, it's showcasing their best stuff. Mm -hmm. It's their best infantry. Uh, that they that they do. So I do actually already have this. Right. Okay. Do you know what? I, do, yeah. Do you know what I mean? As a relatively casual player, the T70s are quite new, and I haven't got any. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, absolutely. And this is a starter set, right? Yeah. It is a and starter set. For fifty pounds, uh, two full platoons of infantry. Mm. It'll get you playing. It. it yeah. Mm. It, it's. Uh, and a slightly different game than all the previous star sets have had you playing too. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah. definitely. I'd, I, I would, I would highly recommend it for those that want to play the infantry version of the game. Mm -hmm. And you've got tanks and guns in there, so you can see what the, yep. the other aspects. Are. It's definitely a fuller game mm. than any of the games um, seen before, and it really showcasing some of the differences. Not only is this a lot of infantry around a lot of tanks, and beware. You've only played their other starter sets. Infantry is a different game. A whole different animal. Same mechanics <laughs> going, but the speed mm. of the game really changes. Mm. But also two different infantry philosophies. The German bases have quite a lot of firepower per base. Mm. The Soviets have got quite a lot of bases. Yeah. yeah. They've also got key units that once they start getting plucked out, they, yes. they if you, reduce if you can power pick out, very quickly. So you have the mistaken target rule. Mm. You know, taking out those Maxim guns. Yeah, if you think of the firepower. the whole lot of it has got firepower at one third, mm -hmm. and then each of the two Maxims <laughs> is another third yeah. each, yeah. Uh, or, or half and quarters. You know, you really can knock a lot out. Mm -hmm. So that using the mistaken target rule, leaving the Maxims in cover while you yeah. push forward and the with commissar, the others, yeah, that's important. keeping the commissar alive. Mm. You know, so you're you're seeing a different aspect of the game, and I think that that's nice. I think it's interesting, yeah. and because they're infantry formations, unlike the tank formations you might see in other starter sets, these are quite expandable. Mm. It's a lot of infantry to paint. <laughs> that is true. It's a lot of infantry to that paint. That is true. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you for spraying one half red and the other half green. Oh, that's a really good idea. 
<laughs> That's twice I've as not done that, I but, I, but I'd consider doing that with an epic Napoleonic, for example. Yeah. Um, for new players, I think it's a cracking starter mm -hmm. set. Great value, yep. great content. Yeah? Agree. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Hello! If you're enjoying our Flame to War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you. Thank you.